Hello and howdy. Welcome back. This is Angular and Kendo UI Unite video series. My name is Alyssa Neichel, the Angular developer advocate for Kendo UI here at Progress. And in today's video, I thought it would be super fun to add a chart to our to-do app to show the busiest time of day. Let's jump in. So here's our app as we left it. We have our awesome to-do list using Kendo inputs and buttons, and we're using custom Angular animations on load in and on add an item and remove an item uh, to make the app look super snazzy. We also added a time picker uh, during the last episode to go ahead and set a do time for each of the to-do items. So we're going to use the to-do data from our app to populate a chart showing which hours in our day are the busiest. And to do that, uh, we need to use a Kendo UI chart. And Kendo UI has many different charts with lots of awesome options. I highly suggest you check out our docs and see all of the very cool examples we have there. Um, but to get started with ours in our application, we just need to do the installation. And thanks to the Angular CLI version 6, uh, we can just use this ng-add command. Um, and so it's just ng-add at progress slash kendo dash angular dash charts. And I've already ran this command to save us some time. So if we go back over to our component, I will show you la la la. I'll show you a couple of things that have changed since last we met. So I went ahead and created an interface uh, with item, do, and hour. Now, item and do were already there uh, from the time picker episode. But if we go to our to-dos and open it up and check it out, you'll see that I've also added hour here, which is using a new date that's identical to do, um, but it's also using a custom pipe that I created. Um, so for those of you who didn't know in Angular, you can use a pipe um, in a template or you can actually use it with a dot transform method inside of your component itself. Uh, let me show off that real quick. So super simple, literally all it's doing is taking the value, which is a date value, and it's getting the hour off of that value. Um, so let's go ahead and show this off, like show off what we're doing to the due time. <laughs> what are you doing to my due time, Alyssa? <laughs> Uh, so first I'll just create a span between our item and our time picker and I'm going to say to do dot hour. Um, so now if we go back over and refresh, you should see that uh, 1 10 a.m. turns to the number one uh, and 10 15 p.m. turns to 22 because we're on a 24 hour clock. Um, and so these are the numbers that we're going to want to use to populate our chart. Um, the next step is actually, uh, we'll get rid of that now and jump back over. So the next step is actually organizing our to-dos by hour. What do I mean? Well, we can't use our to-dos data as it is. We actually need to group it by the hour. So if 1 a.m., for instance, has multiple items, we need to group those together and put them in a group. And that way we can make a chart and show, hey, look, 1 a.m., super busy. And so um, we actually have a group by method. And I'm going to open up our docs to show that off here. Um, inside of our charts, and then inside of data binding, you'll find in our docs a section that talks about groups of objects. We go ahead and then open up data query. We can see um, that you literally just npm install it and import it in order to use it, um, and which I have already done. Let me actually prove that to you. Up here at the top, I'm importing group by and group result here uh, from Kendo data query. Um, so what this is going to allow us to do is pretty much exactly what the function is called, organize to-dos by hour. So if there are no to-dos, go ahead and return null. Otherwise, we're going to take this dot hourly to-dos and we're setting it to group by. Um, what this method needs is going to be this dot to-dos, and then what we want to group the to-dos by, which is hour, right? We want to group it by hour. Um, this dot hourly to-dos 
side note, which I should also mention, um, I typed it up here as to do array or as a group result array. And the group by is actually going to return a group result. So I wanted to mention this instantiation up here and what we did. Um, and then I'm also console logging with json.stringify so that we can see what exactly it's doing to our to-dos array. How is it reorganizing it? So if we save and we go back over um, to this and we can pull up, excuse me, our console real quick. So now we can see what exactly the group by method has done to our data. We see that it has actually done what we'd hoped for and chunked up our items by hour. And so you can see that we have two one o'clocks um, that it's put together. And then down here, um, we have three different individual times. Um, but that's exactly what we wanted and exactly what we need for our chart. Now I'm sure we're all anxious to get something, anything on the screen because we've been talking about charts, we've been manipulating our data, but you're like, Alyssa, just let me see the chart. And so I give unto thee the chart. Uh, let's close our, our pipe, open up the component and below or right next to, as I styled it to do, we're going to go ahead and do our chart, which I created a snippet for. You're welcome. Uh, inside of our Kendo chart, we're going to have a Kendo chart title, uh, busiest time of day, because that's what we're charting here. And then uh, we have two inner items here to talk about. The first one is Kendo chart series. Um, which think of this as like your outer chart wrapper. And then next you have the actual individual items in the chart. So the data is the hourly to-dos. The name is field. And if we go over here, you'll see that we actually have field as a property. The next one is going to be field. And we're going to set that to items.length. Um, this is because we want the hours that have more items, more to-do items attached to them, we want their column to be longer, right? And so if there are more items in this list, then that column needs to be longer. Um, category field is going to be value, which if we keep scrolling, we'll see that that is the hour because that's what we grouped each of these by. Um, and then lastly, type of column, which this could be type of bubble, type of bar, which is like column, but coming from the sides. Um, lots of, I mean, lots of different charts that we could do. Um, but right now we're sticking with our column. So if we go ahead and save that and let it refresh, yay. <laughs> so here we have our chart and you can see that 1 a.m. is in fact busier for some reason than any other part of my day. <laughs> and, um, then you have three individual items uh, here at those hours. Uh, wonderful, working perfectly. However, I don't know about you, but I think we could clean it up just a little bit. Um, one of the first cleanup items that I see is, or at least that I thought of as I was building this out, is when you add to-do items or remove to-do items or change to-do items, like edit their time, the chart doesn't change. Now, if we ponder this, it actually should make a lot of sense why the chart doesn't change. Hourly to-dos is um, being created or um, set equal to the to-dos array inside of our organized to-dos by hour. So what this means is we need to basically call organized to-do by hour on add and remove as well. Um, if we wanna go ahead and see our data updating. So we go back and we remove something. You can see that it is removed from the chart and if we add something new, you can see that that as well is. However, our time picker changing is not. The way that we grab the event off of the time picker is actually going to be super easy. Inside of our Kendo time picker, we're going to bind value change and we're going to set that equal to a method of our choosing. Um, I named ours on time change 
And if we go ahead and go back to our component and uncomment that out, uh, we'll see what magic I'm making happen. So firstly, we're mapping through our to-dos and for each to-do, we're creating an hour property and we're setting that equal to uh, the due, same date, due date, um, but we're running it through our custom hour pipe. And so we're never actually, if we go up to our to-dos, we haven't yet... Um, created a backend so that we can update and remove an ad. And so we needed to do this manually where we're actually creating this hour property here on our to-dos. So every time the time changes, we wanna go ahead and do that as well as using the hour pipe. And we're also calling our organize to-dos by hour, um, which we were doing on add and remove. And this is so that our hourly to-dos are updated, which is what is required for our chart to change. Our, our hourly to-dos need to be up to date with what our to-dos array has. So if we go ahead and go back over and then we change the time, we see our chart change, yay! And if we add in a new one, it changes. And if we delete the new one, it also changes. Wonderful, put a bunch of them uh, to now to show that it is in fact working and <laughs> grouping them by hour. So um, a couple more touch-ups that I would like to do, uh, two more actually, so hang in there with me, you're almost a chart master yourself, um, is, the 1519 one, uh, there's a couple things that need to be done. First of all, I'm not very good at military time. When I see 15, my brain kind of blurs and I'm like, what time is that? And I have to do the math. So I think if we showed it in um, a 12 hour clock rather than a 24 hour clock, that would be super beneficial. Um, and the second thing is, I think if we sorted these um, in order uh, to like earliest in the day to later in the day, it might make a little bit more logic as we read the chart. So if we go back, I have inside of our organized to do's is where we're going to do all of this wonder and we can actually get rid of our console log now. Thank you console log, we love you. Okay, so I created a snippet. Uh, and it's going to humanize our hour time there. And so I'm actually using modulo here to say, if the value modulo 12 is not zero, um, then you're gonna go ahead and set it equal to what that is. And so modulo, if you don't remember, is like taking the remainder from division. So let's go walk through an example. Um, if group.value will say seven, uh, if 7 a.m. modulo 12, which is going to be not equal to zero. So we're going to go ahead and go inside and it's going to set the hour equal to seven modulo 12, which is seven because it's less than 12. If it's 13, it's going to set it equal to one because 12 goes into 13 once with one as a remainder. And so it would give the remainder as the hour. Um, yay for modulo. <laughs> we're also going to add AM or PM to our to-dos down here. Um, uh, super simple, right? If it's greater than 12 or less than 12, set AM or PM. So let's go ahead and see this in action. Refresh. So I realize now the mistake of my ways. <laughs> so we're creating um, this humanized value because we don't want to mess with the value itself. We don't want to turn it from a number to a string. Um, so we're going to create another value called humanized value on group. And so instead of using value as our category field, we want to use humanized value as our category field. I forgot that part. We need to change our template. Oh, I realize what's happening. Our uh, snippet here got a little jacked up. <laughs> so also you should probably spell the variable correctly. Um, do that. So this should plug in our hour along with AM or PM. Yay. <laughs> so 1 AM, 10 PM, beautiful. And let's change something else to uh, 12 PM. That sounds good. Yay. Oh, good. I love, don't you just love when things work? <laughs> 
Uh, so the last thing that we wanted to do was sort. And again, I just used JavaScript voodoos to quickly create. And we're going to put this again inside of our organized to do's um, and forgive the red squiggles. But we're just simply grabbing this dot our release to do and sorting it. And so what this sort is going to do is literally just keep going through it until they're in the proper order. If I save, we should actually see on refresh <laughs> things be in order from 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 7 p.m., 10 p.m. Perfect, exactly what we wanted. So I have just had a blast making this series and I hope you have too, learning a bit about Angular and Kendo UI. Um, check out the links below um, for any additional info or um, the GitHub uh, to all of these codes that we've been working on. And I wish you all the happiest of coding in the future. Thanks for watching.